Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm back again on September 30th. I believe it's Thursday today, yeah. I'm sure it is. And I've got something to share with you. It wasn't but a few days ago that Aubrey had submitted, um, was it a dream? A vision or a word? I can't remember. But this uh, is a word from, to her in the night from the Holy Spirit, I'm sure. Listen to this. She said, it sent, was sent to me this morning at 8.16 a.m. I, I sent this, forwarded it to myself in bigger, so I could make it bigger. But it didn't, the email is still not arrived, so I don't know what happened to it. <clears throat> she says, good morning. I wanted to see what you thought concerning what I heard spoken to me in the spirit last night as I was sleeping. It was regarding apostasy or the great falling away. I heard how many have fallen away and still are falling away from God, but that apostasy also has to do, excuse me, with the departure of the church. I've never looked at it that way. And for some reason, I keep thinking of a double-edged sword we know that the word is referred to as being sharper than a double-edged sword, but it looks to me when the Lord is referring to apostasy, he in fact is referring to two separate events. Definitely pray about it, but this is what I was hearing. What do you think? All right, this was my reply. I already know the answer to that, sister. Yes, the apostasy is the snatching away of the bride and has not, and <clears throat> but not the whole church. Many have fallen away now, doomed to hell because of what they took. So you heard right, but it's not the whole church. The book of Revelation is clear in chapters 2 and 3, the letters to the churches. Only the church of Philadelphia will be found ready to go. And we're fixing to get into that. The other church, pleasing God, will have martyrs. This is Revelation 2.8, Church of Smyrna. Now, Revelation 3.4 lets us know that there will be some others who go. This is the church of Sardis. I hope this confirms what you heard was from the Holy Spirit of the living God. Okay. I said, I'm feeling led to do a teaching on this. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So she replies. Let's see. Um, oh, now, okay. This is kind of on a different subject. So now we're going to go to Scripture. To 2 Thessalonians 2, the verse she's referring to, it starts off to, uh, I mean, this is KJV. I'm going to switch to NASB 95. And it is titled here also, Man of Lawlessness. All right. Now. Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. Paul is talking to the church at Thessalonica, and he is referring to the multitude too large to number. How do I know that? Keep listening. That you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message. Well, let's see what the footnote says, word, a word or a letter, as if from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. The day of the Lord comes in Revelation chapter 6 at the sixth seal. That's the day of the Lord. If you want to give it a day, okay, the day, the great earthquake, and the dead in Christ will rise, and those who are alive and remain, which means have survived, 
the dead in Christ, and those who have survived, will meet the Lord in the air, and will forever then be with the Lord. All right. That's the day of the Lord. Okay? Now, verse 3. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come, it being up here the day of the Lord, unless, until, or until, the apostasy, now this says, falling away from the faith, comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. All right, it goes on to talk more about the son of destruction that we know is Barack Obama. His name's in the Bible. The Old Testament gives description of a man who will not have any regard for women. That's a man who loves men. We already know, God has told me and many, many, many others through words, dreams, and visions, it's Barack Obama. I know some people have seen a blonde-haired, blue-eyed man, but that's probably because they saw Trump, who is kind of gonna has been the right-hand man. He got the MOTB started. Remember, he touts it. He claims I'm the father of the vaccine, right? Because he got it going. He got it going. That operation, quick uh. Speed, warp speed, however they worded it. All right, so back to this word apostasy. Now, when you go to tools, this Blue Letter Bible tool is not complete, but I hope you will see. It's number 646. Apostasia is the word. Okay. It's a feminine of the same as G640. Oh, let's take a look at that one. 647. Divorcement. Writing of divorcement. A bill of divorce. All right, this is uh, down here. It says, adjective from a derivative of... Now, there's another number. Something separative, separative, separative. Especially divorce, writing of divorcement. Okay, it's not helping. All right. Let me go back. All right. So, this word, 646, says... It's to forsake with, if it's used with G575, one time it's used to forsake and a falling away one time. But if you had a better dictionary, it would also include uh, this. Right, let me finish this. A falling away, a defection. Now, what is a defection? You choose to leave, right? To get away from harm? Did people who defected from Russia and Germany in World War II and so on and so forth, when they defected and came to America for safety, was that the same? And then, of course, is apostasy, which it's like using the definition for the word, it also means a taking away, a falling back, a retreat. And that, I don't remember. See, I had all that on my other channel. The teachings, the message from the Lord about it. Um, defection from truth, property, the state, falling away or forsake. All right. We see this going on now. As those who ignorantly give up what they have in order to get keep their worldly. They wanted their life back, okay? No more stay at home, stores being closed, have to wear a mask, etc., etc. 
They thought if they took it and get their worldly life back. Do you see? But if any of you have ever followed Pastor Sandy, which I don't anymore because he he's a good teacher. He has a Greek friend. <laughs> and when they were discussing this chapter, this particular verse and word, that man who knew Greek said, that word apostasy is not, you know, <laughs> our, you know, they talk like Italians, sort of, <laughs> and uh, said, it's not interpreted correctly. <laughs> he said, that's a means of rapture, taking away, snatching away. Well, we see here, this, as we said, the word of God is a two-edged sword. I'm going to pull that up. Oh, darn. <laughs> and where'd he go? Oh, no. What did I do? Oh, no, Mr. Bill. The, uh, the Word of God is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. Okay. <laughs> I'll pull that up. The Word of God is active. Let's see if it's in here like that. If you don't put it in exactly right, it'll say no search results. Here it is. I put the picture, I'm using the picture for this as my thumbprint for the video. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It's a two-edged sword. It has a double meaning. It doesn't just mean a falling away from the faith, which it does mean that. It's obvious it's happening. But it also means the bride is going to be snatched out of harm's way when judgment comes. Judgment is coming. It's on the world now. The Lord is allowing things because it's his judgment. All right. So let me go back to there. Um, okay, so we covered that. Now I'm going to get into the book of Revelation. This covers partly what I said to Aubrey in my reply and includes even more. For those of you who have not yet read the book of Revelation, because maybe you're a relatively new believer and just recently started really delving into the Word, and you've, you're reading the words of Jesus, I have recommended re read the words of Jesus in the Gospels first, and then move to Acts, and then go to where the Lord leads. That's what I try to tell people. Okay, he might have you read the very next chapter. He might have you jump to Revelation. Well, we're going there now, and I'm going to read the letters to the churches and why it is that not so many from the church are going in the first escape. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, we are in chapter 2, starting with verse 1. The one who holds, he says to write, he's telling John to write this down. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, says this. He's describing Jesus. So Jesus says this. I know your deeds and your toil and perseverance and that you cannot tolerate evil men. And you put to the test those who call themselves apostles and they are not. And you found them to be false. And you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have left your first love. I can think of people here, that even before these last, this last year, they're exactly like this. Into the Bible, going to Bible studies. Anyway, moving on, verse 5. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen <clears throat> and repent and do the deeds you did at first. So, if those of you think we don't have to repent, listen up. 
Jesus is telling us all we have to repent of our sinful deeds. We all do them. The word says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you of those sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's a daily thing. Do you take a bath every day? Maybe you only take a bath every other day. Even that is better than not repenting but once a year. Right? You see what I'm saying? Would you go to a wedding without taking a bath and putting on really nice, clean, spotless clothes? And what if you were the bride? What if you were the groom, the bride or the groom? You're going to a wedding. Oh, wait, it's my wedding. It's my wedding. And I am part of the bride. Guys, listen up. So are you. Don't think of this as a man's marrying Jesus. Well, Jesus is a guy. I don't get it. How am I part of the bride? It's you got to think of it in terms of agape love. It's not the same as Eros and... Um, What's the friends? Friends, oh, the other love. There's three or four loves. I forget. Anyway, agape is godly love. Okay, there's a whole lot of guys who have it. So they know what I'm talking about. All right. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen. Because see, now they love the church, the pastor, the people, their home, their husband, their children, serving the church, going to lunch with the church ladies. More than Jesus. It's big in a lot of churches. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen and re... Excuse me. I just ate a pack of snack crackers. Must be something in the chives. <laughs> Cream cheese and chives. Those are my favorite. And repent and do the deeds you did at first. Or else I am coming to you and will remove your lampstand out of its place. Unless you repent. Do you know what having your lamp stand or moved out of its place means? It means you, you'll be denied entrance into heaven. For whatever reason. Probably because you have a stack of sins you didn't repent for. You didn't keep Jesus first. You lost your first love. Don't let yourself, don't find yourself in that position. Verse 6, yet this you do have. Now he's commending them again. That you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. And it's like uh, sorcery and fornication, things like that. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. To him who overcomes. Let's look up that word, Nicolaitans. I want to make sure I'm telling you right. Thirty-five, thirty-one. Alright, there should be a small little paragraph down here. Okay, a sect mentioned in Revelation 2, verses 6, and also in 15, who were charged with holding the error of Balaam, casting a stumbling block before the church of God by upholding the liberty of eating things sacrificed to idols, as well as committing fornication. Okay, so that's any kind of sex outside of marriage. It's not between husband and wife. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so sacrificing unto Balaam, the equivalent of that today is any kind of satanic sacrifice, which includes abortion. I know there are women in the church that have had them, Sometimes because their dad was a pastor and he forced it on their his teenage daughter. I've heard of it. Uh, things like that. And it's just you just have to repent. It's a sin. Is, I mean, it's murder. 
of a little unborn child. It is not a fetus, a piece of blob of cells that are dividing. It is a child with a soul and a spirit. Just repent of it and forgive yourself and don't look back. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. How, how, how worth it is it? How, how worth it is it to forsake the things of the world and to love God most? So you can be in his paradise for eternity. No more worrying about time or our health or our resources or where the next meal is coming from. How am I going to feed my kids? Will I have a roof over my head next month? Don't worry. If, you, if you're if you here and that's the choice, don't worry. Worrying doesn't help. It's, we're instructed in the Bible. Do not worry. It won't add a single day to your life. It won't add a single cent to your pocket. Worrying just makes you physically sick. Pray. And trust because I know there are people in that situation already and more fixing to be now Smyrna let's move on to the church of Smyrna these are types of he chooses seven he writes seven letters that all the denominations of Christianity will fall into one of these seven categories some are way bigger than others obviously and to the angel of the church in Smyrna write the first and the last who was dead and has come to life says this that's Jesus Jesus says this I know your tribulation and your poverty but you are rich if you have Jesus and you have eternity to inherit I mean his he said you we shall inherit. We will be joint heirs with Christ. Do you want to be a joint heir of the heavenly kingdom? That's why we're rich. No matter how poor you are on this earth, you are rich. You have an inheritance coming, baby. And the blasphemy by those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Yeah. That's why 85% of Israel is already on the third one. Verse 10. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison so that you will be tested and you will have tribulation for 10 days. I think this is people after the first rapture, the Antichrist comes into power and people will be arrested, whether it's at a roadblock or where you find yourself in prison, a FEMA camp maybe, you will be tribute, you will go through tribulation and testing for 10 days. Hope that's literal. I really do, but it implies a short time. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. You'll be beheaded. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. That's the main thing. The second death is being thrown into the lake of fire, which is worse than being thrown into hell for a thousand years. Do you get that? Hell might be hot for some. It's for others, it's just darkness and without God. It probably is like heaven. There's going to be levels of rewards. There's probably levels of punishment. So if you only lacked accepting Jesus, but you were a good guy and you helped people, you loved them and you helped them out and, and y you really didn't sin. I mean, that except the little things like we all do. 
but you just couldn't accept Jesus as your Savior. You believed there was more than one way to heaven. Do you think that kind of person deserves the same punishment as... You can think of a lot of examples way worse. You see what I'm saying? Let's move on to message to Pergamum. And to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, The one who has the sharpened two-edged sword says this, I know where you dwell. <laughs> it's funny that would be there because I totally forgot that was in here. The one who has the sharp two-edged sword says this, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast my name. And did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas. Antipas. My witness, my faithful one, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Do you know where Satan dwells? I believe it's at the Vatican. I know they have satanic sacrifices down there. And I've heard in videos of people who've done their research on it, like Chris, uh, Tom Horn and Chris Putman. Yeah, Chris, around 50, 51, he was very young. He was the healthy one of the two, the younger one of the two. He died suddenly, probably got cursed. They probably put a hit out on him because he was getting too close to everything and revealing stuff. The two of them were. But Tom Horn is still around. I think. I haven't heard of him dying. I, I, I haven't heard anything of him for a few years. But they are the ones who did years of research on Catholicism and what goes on in the Vatican. Anyway, moving on. But I have a few things against you because you have, you have there some who hold the teachings of Balaam who kept teaching Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit acts of immorality. So you also have some who in the same way hold the teaching of the Nicolaitans, which is what I just read in the verse above. Therefore repent or else I'm coming to you quickly and I will make war against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, to him I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone and a new name written on the stone, which no one knows but he who receives it. All right, so this is Pergamum. So those who repent and totally submit their lives to Jesus and commit to following him, keeping him first, loving others as yourself, he will give you a hidden manna because you overcame all that opposition around you. A message to Thyatira. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet are like burnished bronze says this, I know your deeds and your love and faith and service and perseverance and that your deeds of late are greater than at first, but I have this against you, that you tolerate this woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. And she teaches and leads my bond servants astray so that they commit acts of immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Okay. <clears throat> I know that there is a verse in the New Testament where Paul is teaching and he tells the church, I can't remember what book it's in. If someone puts a plate of meat, a meal before you, thank God for it and bless it and eat it. Don't ask any questions. But if you know that that piece of meat was sacrificed, came from an animal, it was sacrificed to a foreign false god, to an idol, 
He said, don't eat it, lest you cause your brother, your weaker brother, who might be sitting there next to you, and he know if y'all ever told, oh, this was sacrificed this morning to our whoever, and you go ahead and eat it, and he's thinking, dude, we can't eat things sacrificed to idols. Because this wasn't, this, this wasn't even written yet. When Paul wrote that. <clears throat> when Jesus died on the cross, he said it is finished. What he had to do to accomplish was his death on the cross. He had to come to earth as a human. Fully human, fully, fully God. You know, Jesus only has 24 chromosomes in his blood, right? Maybe some of y'all don't know that. It was proven by Ron Wyatt. You probably find it. Just search Ron Wyatt and Israel discover Jesus. Uh, discovery of Jesus' blood. Just try that. He had he found the Ark of the Covenant, or where it had been, and blood there. Got scraped some of it up. Took it to an Israeli scientist, Jewish scientist. And he didn't tell him much except I found a sampling of blood somewhere I've been digging. I knew him as an archaeologist who did digging around there for different artifacts to prove the Bible. Anyway, long story short, they proved that Jesus only had 24 chromosomes. He had 23 from Mary and only one from the Holy Spirit to give him the male sexuality. You got that? All right. Verse 21, I gave her time to repent, and she does not want to repent of her immorality. Behold, I will throw her on a bed of sickness, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of her deeds. Or you could say their deeds. Their. Early manuscripts read their deeds. That's more accurate if you ask me because her deeds won't condemn you your deeds will condemn you you got that you repent for yourself you can't repent for somebody else you can't say oh lord forgive my my son for all the sins he commits you know uh job did that he would make sacrifices to god all the time because of what his kids might be doing he had like 10 kids they must have been grown because they were partying all the time. And Job was continually making sacrifices to get God to have mercy on them and forgive them. What happened? They were taken from him. I don't know if they went to heaven or hell eventually. Would they? I don't know. Who knows that what their art was? Anyway, we cannot repent for our children or our spouse. They have to do it themselves. He says, <laughs> and I will kill her children. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but I, I didn't know that line was next. I will kill her children with pestilence, and all the churches will know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts. I just said that. And I will give to each one of you according to your deeds. Your deeds. You repent. You do good. You love your neighbor as yourself. You can't make anybody else do it. You can do it. You can make yourself do it. You should love Jesus enough that it's not a chore. I hope you see that. That it's not a hardship for you to give up a little money to help someone, okay? Or to go out of your way to take someone to church because they really want to go. Although we're really supposed to not be going to brick and mortar churches anymore because they're lying to people there might be one here or there that's still they're not telling people to I can't say it on YouTube okay so you know what I'm saying they're telling them it won't hurt them they're taking it and all kind of things candy coating the messages instead of telling them the hard words that are hard to say and they're hard to hear. But I say to you, the rest who are in Thyatira, who do not hold this teaching, 
who have not known the deep things of Satan, as they call on them, as they call them, I place no other burden on you. Nevertheless, what you have, hold fast until I come. He who overcomes, and he who keeps my deeds until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations. That is a prophecy. Or uh, it's written elsewhere. He's, nations are Gentiles. Whenever it's all caps in the NASB, you know that it was written elsewhere. It's, it's fulfilling a prophecy. It's Okay. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of the potter are broken to pieces, as I also have received authority from my father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Next chapter. Oh, man. See, this is not generally a red letter. It starts off red. The words of Christ should be in red. But um, I don't know why it starts off red and then it won't stay red. But anyway. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Wake up. And strengthen the things that remain, which were about to die. For I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of my God. So remember what you have received and heard, and keep it, and repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments, and I will not erase his name from the book of life, and I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Do you know that you are blessed just by listening to this? Any messages about the book of Revelation? You are blessed for reading it or listening to word messages, the word read to you. That's in this book somewhere, the first chapter or the last one. I'm not sure. Message to Philadelphia. This is the bride. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, He who is holy, who is true, who has the key of David, and who opens and no one will shut, who opens and no one will shut, and who shuts and no one opens, says this. In other words, Jesus says this. I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut because you have a little power a little power and have kept my word and have not denied my name behold I will cause those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not but lie I will make them come and bow down at your feet and make them know that I have loved you. I believe that's when we return after we get our glorified bodies. Those elite, those Jews, many, Rothschild, Rockefeller, or well, maybe it's not Rockefeller, but Rothschild, some, those 13 names in the Illuminati, many of them are Jewish, but they're not. You know what I'm saying? They don't live like it. They don't believe like they should. They just, they've completely turned from God. And they started 
Jerusalem and Israel. Okay? Their money started Jerusalem, got Israel back. And it was all part of God's plan. So he allowed everything that happened to happen. Because you have kept the word of my perseverance, says Jesus, I also will keep you from the hour of testing or temptation. That hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. We are there. People's faith is being tested. And many refuse to believe what we've been trying to tell them. What YouTube will no longer let us say. I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have so that no one will take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will not go out from it any more. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. Excuse me. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That's the bride, church. Brides. Church. Listen up. It's not too late to repent. And throw out those worldly things. Message to Laodicea. This is the wickedest ones. I think this is the lukewarm church. And it's the majority. This is the big. This is the biggest amount of people. To the angel of the church in Laodicea. I mean Christians. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write. That's my personal opinion. Okay. That's not in the Bible. I just know what I see. And who does what. And I got a big sample in here and big family from, that I came from. And I know how many of them are not going to heaven. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, The Amen, the faithful and true witness, and the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, says this, that's Jesus, says this, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. You're not on fire for me, he says. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Footnote says literally vomit. He wants nothing to do with lukewarm Christians. Calling themselves Christian and denying the power thereof. We are taught, and Apostle, Apostle Paul wrote, with such a one do not even eat. Because they deny the power of God. That there's no Holy Spirit gifts left. That that died out with the apostles. And that speaking in tongues business is nonsense. And that there's no more healing. There's no more this. There's no more that. Stuff that's miracles. No more works of the Holy Spirit. No more prophesying in tongues or English. That's all gibberish. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Unto those people that speak forth that nonsense. And those lies from the pit of hell. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed and I salve to anoint your eyes so that you can see that you may see, so that you may see, may, might, can, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, therefore be zealous and repent.
You will be disciplined in the tribulation. But if you stay strong and hold fast to the word of God and his promises that I will not leave you nor forsake you, you keep refusing it and you will make it. And you will get to share in the par share in the glory of the paradise of God for eternity. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. What did Jesus have to overcome, you might say? He was God. It had to be easy for him. It's hard being human and being with all these people who keep saying this and saying that. It's really hard. Really? Jesus was tempted by Satan himself when he was in the desert for 40 days. Don't you know that man as a man? He was starving. Just turn these stones into bread said Satan. What did he say? Turn these stones into bread if you're hungry. And Jesus said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus was empty in his flesh of the fleshly needs and wants, knowing he was leaving home to travel, choose apostles, teach and preach and do miracles and teach us how to act so those words could be written down later for us. That's the Gospels. And then he knew it would have to finish with him dying on the cross for you and me and everybody. Did you accept it? Have you accepted it yet? Have you accepted him yet and made him your Savior? I pray you have. He said, he who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Brothers and sisters in Christ, and anyone else who sees this video, I implore you to listen to these words from Jesus himself, given to John through an angel. Not sure how that worked. All I know is I believe that the word of God is true. And it is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. Remember what I read earlier, to the dividing of the soul and spirit. I pray you will repent and take this message to heart and share it. Like it. That If people follow you or look and see who you're following and they see your list of likes, then they might come and watch and learn too. Pastors aren't preaching this. Not, not enough. Some maybe. Are they preaching it right? Are they really telling people, you got to repent. You got to repent. You have to. Once saved, always saved. It says you don't have to repent. Our sins are forgiven. Past, present, and future. It's in the Bible. Yes, but as I said yesterday or day before, that's conditional. The blood, the, the blood was shed. The provision was made. 